This trip is brought to you by SMART. People, friends and strangers alike, often come up to me and say, I love your show. Take me naman with you sometime. Well, in this edition of Travel Time, six lucky people get to do just that. I'm Susan Carlo Medina. In this edition, we do Baguio my way. Where I want to go, what I want to do, what I want to see. My personal Baguio. Welcome to a trip most extraordinary. This week can be considered a landmark week for travel time. For the first time in the show, we're taking guests with us to get that travel time experience. You may ask, if this trip was so special, why choose Baguio? It's so been there, done that, right? Wrong. I chose to take our guests to Baguio firstly because it is an iconic travel destination. Every Pinoy must visit Baguio at least once in their lifetime. Secondly, I chose Baguio precisely because you might think that after one or two visits, you've seen Baguio. Ha! You're not even close. So we set off from Manila on board our private van, taking the quick route via Enlex, then Esitex. Then we took a rather roundabout way, passing by Cabanatuan and going through Victoria, then Herona, thus skipping the weekday traffic of Tarlac City. It was a longish drive going to La Union, and while we were on the road, we saved ourselves possible hassle by going online with SmartGro mobile internet to confirm our hotel reservations. It was a scenic route and my tech-savvy guests took photos of the view and themselves so that they updated their friends about the trip in real time via MMS using their smart connection. If you've ever watched Travel Time, even only a handful of shows, you know that here in Travel Time, we love to eat. And we eat well. It doesn't have to be a posh place, even a hole in the wall. As long as the food is good, go na tayo. Well, in this trip, hindi pa kami 30 minutes into Baguio, we found this nook that serves the best Thai food in the area. Tara na! By the time we neared Baguio, we were ready for some major chows. So, when we got to Baguio proper, our first stop was at a rustic-looking joint along Romulo Drive, right in front of Wright Park. Happy Tummy is run by Guy Gomez, who is actually Kapampangan. The Thai connection comes from her sister, who is married to a Thai, who, in turn, helped train the local cooks that Guy employs. We feasted first on the catfish salad, then slurped the deliciously spicy seafood soup. It was followed by the chicken pandan and two versions of pad thai since it turned out that two of our companions were vegetarians. No part of our travel was left undocumented. One click of the camera phone and pictures of the dishes were instantly uploaded on their Facebook page with SMART. Instant travelogue. 
updated in real time. And of course, this being travel time, there is always culture. And so, off we go to the Bencab Museum. It just so happens that Bencab is a personal friend. So, who should give us a personal tour but the national artist himself? National artist for visual arts, Ben Cab, was already waiting to receive us when we arrived at the museum along Asin Road in Tuba, Benguet. Though raised in Manila, years of living in the uplands has given him the aura of a true blue Baguio sun. Indeed, his adoption of the culture in his chosen home has resulted in an enviable collection of bulul's, native implements, and other outstanding examples of indigenous arts and crafts of the Cordilleras. We have here my collection of contemporary art and Cordillera tribal art, aside from my own work. The whole idea is to share it with people and it would be nice to, to have, you know, to house them in a proper setting. The Bencab Museum is, of course, the permanent home of the Bencab Collection, which includes the artist's four decades worth of works. In a secluded corner of the museum is the Erotica Gallery, which features works of a more risque nature. There is, as well, the Philippine Contemporary Art Galleries, which highlights Ben Cab's own taste as an art patron. And Patio Salvador, which is an open terrace that features Ben Cab's works on Mariwasa tiles, and where one can view the rest of Ben Cab's huge estate. The museum is an additional attraction for Baguio. And this space that I was able to get, it's like the Baguio of old days because I have plants, I have the mountain. When they come here, they feel relaxed, they, they love the place. And I think it's successful in that sense. This being my first night with my special guests, a special dinner is in order. An extraordinary dinner even and the hill station at Casa Vallejo delivers with flying colors. You can't miss hill station in Casa Vallejo. It is at the top of Session Road. Dining here is an activity steeped in history. Spanish immigrant Salvador Vallejo leased the property from the government in 1927 and converted it into a popular hotel. When Casa Vallejo closed down in 1999, people were thinking it would soon be demolished or turned into an Ukay Ukay center. Thankfully, the DENR recognized the hotel's value as an historic landmark and earmarked it for preservation as Baguio's first hotel. I named it Hill Station because we are in a 100-year-old hotel. Uh -huh. And it was built in 1909, and Baguio was built by the Americans as a Thank hill you. station. Hill Station is definitely fine dining, but with a casual feel. It all fit in perfectly with what I like because I decided to feature Asian food. Uh -huh. For starters, I make a seared tuna, okay. which I call tuna tataki, uh -huh. and I serve it with homemade mayonnaise and wasabi. I have curries from Sri Lanka, from India, okay. Cambodia, some Thai food. It's really a mix. Basically, I cook what I like to cook at home, 
and I've never been to cooking school. I have my grandmother and my mother to thank <laughs> for training me well. And for dessert, the full performance treatment of the mango flambe, served still smoking and topped with Mitos's very own homemade vanilla cinnamon ice cream. What a way to end a full day. Ninety percent of my crowd are Baguio people, which is great because then I sustain the restaurant the whole year round. Okay. I'm not seasonal. A full day's tour deserves the right hotel, and my hotel of choice in Baguio is the Manor. We arrived at Camp John Hay Manor past 11 p.m. Full, pleasantly tired, if a bit cold, so the fireplace by the lobby was a welcome sight. Our rooms were, of course, well appointed, definitely comfortable. When we opened the manor, we found out that the perception nationwide in Baguio was that Baguio hadn't recovered from the earthquake yet. I said we have to open with a bang. And so what we did, we offered 50% discount packages for the golf and for the manor. And that had immediate responses. And immediately the word spread, Baguio is back. And then John Hay, per se, I think has put Baguio back on the map as a tourist destination. And after that, of course, Baguio developed hotels, new hotels were being built, and Baguio was back in business. The 177 Manor is the center point of the recent redevelopment of Camp John Hay, a sprawling luxury condo hotel the manor is equipped with all the modern amenities set within a laid-back colonial Baguio architecture. In the morning, a sumptuous five-star breakfast buffet was ready for us when we walked in to Manor's Le Chef. Just what we needed to start the day. Today, I, I think we are still the preferred hotel. I think our thing now is to keep the market share we have because there are many new destinations people can choose from. So we have to try to open up new markets for Baguio. A visit to the PMA grounds is a must for a true Baguio experience, ordinarily. But travel time does not do ordinary. So for this visit, we have an audience with a superintendent himself and a guided tour of the campus with an Elticol or a lieutenant colonel. The Philippine Military Academy presently sits at Fort Gregorio del Pilar, a sprawling 373 hectare compound in Loacan. PMA's origins can be traced to 1898, when President Emilio Aguinaldo ordered the establishment of the Academia Militar in Malolos, Bulacan. PMA is an institution. It trains the officers of the Philippines. Okay. Kaya ito pong PMA may responsibility siya sa bayan natin uh -huh. para yung mga mailabas niyang mga officer natin ay mabubuti. A pity it rained since, aside from us, there were World War II veterans visiting and there would have been a parade in their honor. No worries, though, because we were assigned two top cadets of the graduating class to guide us through the indoor sites at PMA. From the murals along the halls of the PMA main building, To 
to the PMA Museum, which features a complete collection of cadet uniforms through the years, as well as a life-size diorama of a typical cadet living quarters. To the displays at the Lopez Hall, Apat po yung ibinibigay sa kabataan dito. Okay. They train on character development. They train on academics. Mm -hmm. Tapos yun pong military skills para paglabas po nila, kaya po nila, they can engage in battle. Okay. At saka yung pang-apat, yun po yung physical development. So they have to be strong and physically fit. And of course, the commissary, where we vent our frustration by buying more stuff, Inaanyayahan po namin kayong lahat. Pumunta po kayo dito sa PMA upang makita ninyo yung magandang tanawin at maramdaman ninyo yung paghihimok natin ng ating mga kabataan upang maging mabuti at magaling na opisyal. And we will be very, very happy to welcome you here. Rain is usually a downer for any trip, but we didn't let that get us down. We just looked for a picker-upper which we found in the steaming dishes of a Pinoy place called Sinamak. Found near the end of Legarda Road, Sinamak is another of those places whose simple looks belie the food they serve inside. As the rain poured, we busied stuffing ourselves. First, with steamed okra with spiced olive dip, followed by the lechong manok and inadobo sagatang manok. Grilled lapu-lapu filet with creme saffron, grilled stuffed squid, several vegetarian dishes thrown in for good measure Rain or not, each dish was dutifully documented without any problem. Thanks to Smart, everything we were served was readily uploaded in our Facebook photo album. And now for some retail therapy. We skipped the retail shops and went straight to the place where great silver works are designed and handcrafted, the Tawid Workshop. Tawid in Filipino means to cross, but in the Cordilleras, it means heirloom. However the word is used, Tawid's silverworks does cross well over generations as heirlooms. Owner and designer Baby Rimando proudly tour us through the various ways she has found to manipulate silver to create her delicate masterpieces. The silver works at Tawid are such finds, and our group didn't waste the opportunity to buy to their heart's content. With Smart, it was easy for anyone to call their loved one back in Manila to help choose the perfect silver memento. Dinner was at the Manor Piano Bar, prepared exclusively for us by no less than Chef Billy King, the man who brought La Soufflé to Manila, who is the lord of the Manor's kitchen. Five or six small uh, dishes, I think it's, it's a, a way to get to let you uh, taste a lot of the things that we do. So we start with foie de canard, very small. It's just with a little bit of raspberry sauce. A seafood dish, which is like a little bit of tuna tataki, a little bit of prawn, a little bit of scallop with a salad, with avocado, with uh, three different dressings. And then after that, we have a sea bass with spinach, mushrooms, and leeks, baked in filo pastry. And then with a very light, fluffy hollandaise sauce, very refreshing dish, very, very light. 
And then we have a little bit of beef with broccoli and uh, peppercorn vinaigrette instead of the heavy sauces. In the middle of our meal, the band started their set, which lent a real laid-back feel to the dinner, which was capped by the Belgian chocolate gâteau for dessert and a surprise cake for one of our guests, whose birthday weekend it was. Good thing we have SmartBro mobile internet to instantly upload the wackiest moments of our trip on Facebook. We are introducing to you a well-kept secret, the shop of Greg Savado. Here's a man who has an item or two in most of the mansions in Forbes Park. Somewhere along Outlook Drive, right behind the mansion hangs a cheap painted metal sign saying, Sabados Handicrafts. Don't be deceived by the nondescript facade because behind it lies a treasure trove of wood furniture and tribal artifacts. This used to be our house. Okay. And then uh, we, we made it into a coffee shop. Uh -huh. Everybody is all invited to come. It's not every day we get the chance to visit Greg Sabado's store and find a gift or pasalubong for a loved one. With Smart, we can text whomever the gift is for and ask him to make his pick among these treasures. Greg invited us to visit Arca's Yard Cafe, located at Tip Top Ambuklao Road and run by his wife, Ninja. Of course we accepted. It was compact, homey, and as can be expected, well appointed with Greg's personal collection of rare Cordillera artifacts. We thoroughly enjoyed his Café Kum Museum and the Highland coffee and camote and calabasa pudding that Ninja served us. Now this next one is a real hole in the wall, but with great Malaysian food and great prices. Just near Greg Sabado's workshop, at the corner of Outlook at VL Romolo Drive, we stopped at Apollo, which has a couple of tables laid out Karinderia style. The wall beside it was cut to reveal a makeshift kitchen with a tarpaulin sign, Chef's Home. Orders were placed and served quickly, and boy, were we impressed. Instead of your run-of-the-mill karinderia fare, what was served was well-cooked dishes, plated five-star hotel style. The man slaving away in front of a stove was Alvin M. Wang, a Malaysian national who is an actual chef and a former general manager of several hotels in Bangkok and Malaysia who married a Filipina and decided to settle in Baguio. It was heavenly, an extraordinary finish to a totally extraordinary weekend, shared with newfound friends to be remembered for a long time. We're excited to go back because now we know where to take people. This is really a pleasant surprise. I didn't think it was going to be anything like this. It's a once in a lifetime experience. This has been a wonderful trip. Susan Calo Medina, as usual, is a pathfinder. You see this? That is what Baguio is about to me. And a memorable birthday at that with all of this Kalum. In all travels, the people. Yes, the, people the company. With, yes. the Made friends. it worth it. Yeah. I would say that this experiment has been a resounding success. 
who knows, we might do it again sometime. It's easy to turn an ordinary trip into an extraordinary experience. Just open your eyes and your mind. I'm Susan Calo Medina. Huwag magindayuhan sa sariling bayan.